¿Qué tal amigos? Yo soy Javier Mota, los saludo y aquí desde Gotemburgo en Suecia en el museo de Volvo que por cierto tendrá una nueva sede en 2024 en el centro de Gotemburgo este está aquí en el puerto donde salen los cruceros así que vamos a hacer un pequeño recorrido aquí por la historia de Volvo que en el 27 además va a cumplir 100 años tenemos aquí nuestro guía Hello. <laughs> I'm Hans. Uh, I'm working as a heritage manager, but I work up in uh, our global brand team actually. Um, I'm you. I'm loving the products and uh, the hardware we do have. Actually, I'm one of you. Uh, until two years ago, I was a car journalist. I worked for the biggest uh, car magazine in, in Sweden, Teknik and Sverd. Maybe remember the small, maybe the A class, the flipped over. That was our, us do, doing that. But I'm from the area, uh, always been following the, uh, and reporting about Saab and Volvos. So uh, I'm passionate to drive uh, around the brand. Uh, I have up to now maybe five, eight, ten uh, Volvos. So I, un I understand it. But like you've been traveling all over, we've been on Laguna Seca and so on. Uh, great. Uh, so now we're here. Uh, actually, this is quite cool area. This is, was the biggest ship wharf in the 60s. It is Jötaverk in Arendal. So behind the big house, you see, uh, just pass it. That was a hull hall where you could three, six, five days a year, uh, you know, weld a, a hull and out to send 500 meters of oil tankers and oil rigs. And then the Asia came, Japan and Korea. So it was, and Volvo didn't have any museum. So for 30 years ago, they moved in here. So it's, a, it's not designed as a, as a museum. It is really a workshop, but this is the happy year. This is, we're gonna close this because this is gonna open next time you come, come to Gothenburg. That's World of Volvo. It's a total new experience. It's a, more like an event and meeting place. Uh, but for me, from, from this area, it is actually a manifesto because now we're gonna have cars downtown next to the biggest amusement park in, in uh, Scandinavia. So, you know, we're going to show our heritage for much bigger audience. And, uh, I mean, we're, we're going to show 50 cars here, but we, in our collection we have 350 vehicles. So we're also be building a storage, the vault, that's going to be open in two years' time. So uh, wait for your next travel, two years, and then you're going to have, it's going to be Pacific Ocean with roofs. So I think we're going to rush, 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 uh, and then uh, see what the time says. So everything started actually in the 1800 because we have a lot of uh, factory in uh, textile and um, fabrics and that was the thing actually but everything here in, in Gothenburg area is on muddy, blue clay we, we call it. So one of these big factories it was starting to tilt so I have to hire a guy called Sven. He was the inventor of this one, the ball bearing, the SKF. And one of these ball bearings were branded as Volvo in 1915. Uh, and then the two guys over here, Gustav and Assar. Gustav was a shorter one, he was an engineer. Assar was a uh, manager in Paris for SKF. They come up with the idea, let's do a product that we put all the, the ball bearings in. Uh, and that time, Sweden was very poverty. We don't have really started our kickoff. So um, we're, we're really good in, in, in railroads. We're looking to, to uh, UK, but you know, our roads were really, really bad. So let, they said, let's do an automobile. It was a bit of copycat Detroit, but it was much more robust um, and uh, a bit over engineered, I should say. Uh, the thing is, and then if you see a car like this with steel bits, steel wheels, it's one of the 10 prototypes. One of them got the nickname J Jacob. Um, but later on then, this was 26, 27, this car came. This is a ÖV4. Can you say ÖV4? ÖV4. Oh, good. <laughs> Open wagon, four cylinder. Uh, so that was, and this came spring 27. Uh, I like the story because uh, Gustav was engineer, but the body was actually designed by a guy, Helmer, and he was actually in study for the biggest artist we had in Sweden at that time, under Sorg. So, if you see on the picture here, this was how it looked in Sweden in 1910, 1920. We didn't have the money, so we haven't really started to move into cities. Uh, so the, the guy, Gustav Assar, was, the price of that Övifyra was 4,800 seconds. That was too much for the common Swedish. We didn't have the money. So they come up with the, they do the heavy stuff. So 28, we launched 
the lorries and the buses, uh, and it's the same platform, a bit heavier, I mean, leather frame, stretched, same engine. So uh, when, when we look at that, maybe a bus or a truck was the first one that we were going on in Sweden, because the car was really designed for Sweden and bad roads here. Yeah. That was the thing. Uh, good to know also is, uh, you know, we did it, the cars were a bit of a fiasco the first 20 years, so actually we made money on the, on the heavy stuff, so without them, uh, but let's go up to, this is 20, then we'll go upstairs. Uh, I do a lot of different things, yeah. Good. Before, uh, it is the PV444, and it's our really first attempt to do public, you know, like a personal car then. Uh, it was it was 1947. It was uh, for launch then uh, as a production car. The price of this was actually this 1947, 4,800. Can I get over here now? I have to collect you. Good. Yeah, you're so 90, 1956, very important year. This car is launched. It's designed by John Bielskod. It was only 20 years when it was hired by Assar and Gustav, the two uh, founders. Actually, he was also studying artists. He was sculpture in the artist school here in Gothenburg. I, once again, he was uh, only 23. He was uh, living in New York, studying at Pratt University. One of the first guys from Sweden uh, went over to US studying design. Pelle Pettersson is turning 91 this August. This is leather frame, the other one's uh, uh, body. Uh, but this is uh, the, the wagon or SUV produced on the PV. Uh, we do this in 100,000 US for Swedish. It is quite high volume. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, they were everywhere in the 60s. Handyman's, the name you it's really fun because it's two cars in one. So it was the car. This is the first Volvo I ever was. Vesk, you, we have to put it in the context. At that time, you know, human centric was very important. It was also, you know, the Swedish mentality at that time to really take care of your life a little bit. So we were among the really, really first to do this. This is almost like a showroom of what you can do, actually. Everything from the bumper, the color should be visible in traffic, uh, you know, visible in road cage. It also has a, a screen on the IP. And because you have to look at it on the rear. Because you can go with the flow. But yeah, yeah, it's fine. So, Do this it. is one of the. We have two extra exhibitions this last year. And this is cars in, in duty, cars in service. We have taxis. Defense was very important, of course, for us. We, we then have a war for 300 years, but we have defense. So, this is actually PV with uh, for Air Force. Look out, so you have one driver and one soldier standing up here looking for Russians or someone else. Uh, <laughs> Danes. <laughs> so this is you know, when the thieves were going, they have to go back to the station, hook up and then off they go again. Timers, it's very important. is the shit because you can buy a car that are 15 years Scandinavian driver from Finland and uh, Sweden. We did a lot of results. My favorite is the flying brick over here. We, we, we were attempt to go into racing. We should do it with the new 700. We did it on 10 year old 240 instead. So it was the first car of this young talent, John Will Scott, the designer who came here in 1950. And actually he stayed for five decades. I don't know any car company who has a design manager for five decades. <laughs> so this was very, uh, this looked like a Nash or something. <laughs> Maybe some of you have been reporting on this car. It came 2004, uh, so next year is 20 years. It's the YCC, your concept car. It was actually developed and managed by seven females. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, Citroën. And the color is also, you know, visible in traffic. Bueno, este fue un rapidísimo paseo aquí por el Museo Polvo en Gothenburg. No tuvimos mucho tiempo por cuestiones del 
itinerario para el próximo programa, pero en 2024 quizá podremos volver para ver el nuevo museo que se va a abrir aquí en el centro de la ciudad, ya no va a estar en las afueras lo vamos a ver el nuevo Volvo World en 2024 hasta la próxima Thank you.